Welcome aboard. We appreciate your attention as we demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft. Before helping others with their oxygen masks, please take a moment to consider the burden of being alive. I've been sort of obsessed lately with pre-flight safety videos, probably one of the most watched and least paid attention to genres of modern media. Please pay attention. In complying with the requirements of aviation regulations to communicate safety information to passengers, airlines are faced with a difficult task. They need to prepare you for the possibility of a plane crash, but they also don't especially want you thinking about the possibility of a plane crash. Perhaps because of this tension, pre-flight safety videos often have a detached, dissociative tone. Seemingly set anywhere other than actually on an airplane, they feature flight attendants with hollow smiles, performing pre-flight rituals, and reciting sacred safety texts against a backdrop of surreal imagery. Why is this man here? Where are they putting this suitcase? What is this conceptual art installation? Are we gonna die? Safety videos prepare you for the improbable possibility of the most horrifying catastrophe you'll ever experience. With a breezy corporate calmness, they alert you to the ever-present risk of your terrifying death. So buckle up, and let's look at some incredible pre-flight content. While the classic safety presentation is delivered in person by flight attendants, the pivot to video began in the 80s, following a report that passengers typically watched less than half of the live safety presentations. Passengers also don't watch the videos. Doubling as advertisements for the airlines, these videos have gotten increasingly elaborate. Songs, celebrities, animation, uh, fitness videos? Videos filled with memes, trying too hard to go viral. Ostensibly, this is for our safety, a way to ensure that we pay attention. But our attention isn't on the safety information, it's on the gimmicks. Yeah, boom, sex, son, chubby. Yeah, I've seen the United Airlines video dozens of times, but before I started researching this topic, I didn't remember much of what it said. What I did remember was this moment when a flight attendant passes by someone in a sea monster costume, and for like a single second before it cuts away, she has this bemused, condescending sneer, like she just does not have time for this Loch Ness monster nonsense. Despite being functionally the equivalent of legal fine print, many of the videos are bizarrely cinematic, often invoking the icon of film. United's video opens with these swelling strings as an orchestra records a soundtrack in a studio, the camera panning back to reveal a control room. It ends in a theater, with a small section of airline seats in place of the theater seats. I get notes of Nicole Kidman's ad for AMC. We go somewhere we've never been before. Not just entertained, but somehow we born. We don't take to the air for mere transportation between locations. We take to the air to be transported into the awe-inspiring worlds of the seatback screen. Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. This theater imagery repeats strangely often. It's in the videos for Delta Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Iberian Airlines, Air France. If it's not a theater, then it's a full-on Hollywood movie tie-in. There's a Star Wars safety video, a Lego movie safety video, a Lord of the Rings safety safety video directed by Taika Waititi, the pre-flight safety cinematic universe. As Robert Wool argues, aviation and cinema have had a close relationship since their inception. Early film often depicted aircraft, and movies started being shown on planes as early as the 1920s. Their marriage seemed made in heaven. Both technologies had been born in the Belle Epoque, those years of extended serial innovation between 1895 and 1905, when the Western genie escaped from the bottle and the fantastic became part of the fabric of everyday life. Moreover, filmmaking and flying shared more than the accident of their simultaneous appearance. Both aimed at nothing less than the liberation of humankind from the constraints of everyday reality, and both were a form of escape. Early aviation wasn't understood primarily as a way to get places. When flight was first accomplished, the idea that it could be incorporated into our everyday lives still seemed outlandish. Rather than being a practical tool, flight was a source of spectacle. Aviators were entertainers, magicians pulling off awe-inspiring tricks. To admire aviator Charles Lindbergh was to raise one's head from the tawdriness of everyday life in overcrowded cities towards the majesty of the sky, to glimpse the possibilities for transcendence that lay hidden in human beings, and in doing so, to be exalted. In a century, we've gone from flight being spectacular and magical, to it being boring, a tedious necessity of travel, and worse, a contributor to climate change. 
change. Also, Charles Lindbergh was a massive anti-Semite. These videos aim to bring some of the magic back. Look at all these far-off worlds you can visit, all these sights you can see. Thank you for embarking upon your journey with Air New Zealand. May your path always be guided by the light of the stars, and may the future bestow upon you all the happiness and adventure our Middle Earth has to offer. But even as this branding invokes the cinematic history of flight, airlines are invested in the boringness of travel. Today, when most people get on a plane, they actually aren't interested in participating in any death-defying stunts. When I go visit my grandparents, I'm personally not looking for a non-stop thrill ride across the Atlantic. Flight is a deeply unnatural experience. You are tens of thousands of miles in the air in a narrow container moving hundreds of miles an hour, and you're just supposed to be okay with it? To make flight palatable to customers, airlines have worked to make the experience as smooth and uneventful as possible, to a point that air travel is now by far the safest mode of transportation. Safer than driving, safer than taking a train or a bus. I mean, if we watched safety videos for every part of our daily lives that's as risky as flying, we'd just be living in a world of non-stop safety videos. When eating a grape, please be sure to thoroughly chew before swallowing. While most people don't have an acute fear of flying, many of us do still have some level of underlying anxiety at the whole flight situation. This is why airlines invest in entertainment. First it was magazines, then seatback screens, then Wi-Fi and outlets to charge your phone, all to help distract you from the terror of flying. You get immersed in the fictional world of some corny rom-com, and you tune out the actual world in which you're hurtling across the sky. Sam K. Young, but my friends call me by my initials, Sky. I love the sky. Stephen Greening contrasts the use of screens on a flight to the use of screens in a thrill ride. A 3D ride uses screens to simulate motion, to trick your proprioception or sense of movement into feeling like you're moving more than you are. Your seat will tilt and shake, and the movement on screen makes you feel like you're swinging with Spider-Man or whatever. The thrill of the fairground attraction, roller coaster, carnival ride, or motion simulation ride is predicated on the disjuncture between the feeling of falling, the proprioception illusion of imminent disaster, and the knowledge that one is safe and firmly on the ground. In this sense, the thrill ride is the opposite of the in-flight movie. While the thrill ride is invested in stimulating the proprioceptive into believing the virtual is actual, the imperative of in-flight entertainment is to convince the proprioceptive that the actual is virtual. Even the way that your flight itself is portrayed on airline screens flattens it into a virtual experience. In the plane, passengers must forget high and low and concentrate on the near and far. The GPS system, the maps, the constant updating of flight paths, estimated time of arrival, and so on, are all part of a concerted effort to convince us that the space conquered by our modern space-annihilating technologies is horizontal not vertical. In United Safety video, you're never exposed to the physical reality of flight. Instead, parts of the plane are inserted into a variety of settings down on the ground. Exit path lights illuminate the aisle of a Northern Lights viewing in Alaska. Our attention is directed to the no smoking and no vaping signs at the Holy Festival in Delhi. Oxygen masks drop down from the ceiling at Oktoberfest in Munich. The video dislocates the airline experience from the physical setting of the airplane. It understands the plane not as a literal object, but as a collection of symbols. Don't be scared. You're not on a real plane flying in the real air. You're just on a symbolic representation of a plane. Everything's gonna be okay. There's only one scene in the video that's actually set on a plane, and it ends with this moment in which the flight attendant rips through the backdrop, revealing that it wasn't actually even a real plane to begin with. This is such a great moment. We're supposed to believe that this tear was an accident, but then there just happens to be a camera man right there. There just happens to be a kangaroo ready to pop in. I don't buy this whimsy and wonder for a minute. The casting of flight attendants is ubiquitous in these videos, and they're often the most memorable part. Back in 2008, flight attendant Catherine Lee Hinton, better known as Delta Lena, went viral for her campy safety video performance. Smoking is not allowed on any Delta flight. That's the clip that went the most viral, but I think the funniest line delivery is actually right before that from one of the other flight attendants. Can I smoke? 
Oh, I'm so sorry. It's giving Tommy Wiseau. I did not hit her. The use of flight attendants in these videos allows for continuity with the classic pre-flight safety demonstrations delivered live. And I mean, those demonstrations themselves are a theatrical experience. The gay guy flight attendant narrates over the intercom after cracking some jokes about the local sports team. His delivery is charming, his pacing enthralling. And then there's the older lady flight attendant acting out the safety procedures, and the chemistry between these two is immaculate. They're like dance partners. One sets up the jokes, the other elevates the material and nails the choreography. Safety videos often portray their flight attendants through an image of white middle-class femininity, an image that historically was strictly enforced by airlines. In addition to hiring discrimination based on race, in the 50s and 60s, airlines had explicit hiring requirements for height and weight, and candidates were routinely rejected based on their appearance. Until the late 60s, flight attendants were also typically forced into retirement at the age of 32 or 35. That desired feminine image was seen as essential to the function of the flight attendant, a calm, comforting, nurturing figure there to assure you that everything is safe. As Kathleen Berry and others have noted, this had consequences for flight attendants as workers, making it harder for them to fight for fair working conditions and compensation because their work wasn't perceived as work. Female flight attendants were doomed to have the discipline, effort, and skill that they devoted to meeting airlines' appearance and behavior standards dismissed as doing simply what women naturally know how and want to do, to look and act like proper women. Yet the ultimate challenge for stewardesses was to perform every act aspect of their multifaceted work with such unwavering charm and attractiveness that none of their labor was evident. They were supposed to provide service and safety as well as smiles with an appearance of effortlessness. The more effectively stewardesses did their jobs, by airline standards, the more complicit they became in concealing their own skills and hard work. To feel that your flight attendant is working is frightening. Why do they look stressed? Is something wrong? Is something wrong with the plane? Flight attendants uphold the illusion of normal aboard the aircraft, central figures and assuring you that flying is normal. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? Despite all this, a level of cultural distrust remains towards airline safety protocols. Think of the scene in Fight Club in which toxic male manipulator Tyler Durden is like, bro, you know why they really have oxygen masks on airplanes? It's to pacify you. Oxygen gets you high. Aviation safety is the opiate of the masses. It's all right here. Emergency water landing, 600 miles an hour. Blank faces, calm as Hindu cows. Or these viral TikToks claiming that airlines give misleading safety information about bracing for impact because if there's a crash, it's financially better for them if you just die. When you're in this position, your back is gonna break, including your spine, and you're gonna die immediately. That's because if you survive a plane crash, you can basically sue the airline for millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you're gonna win that. You might be thinking, are medical expenses really that much worse than wrongful death damages? Are airlines really okay with the hit to their public image that accompanies air fatalities? Don't these safety protocols not even come from the airlines, but from international regulations? But you don't have a million TikTok followers, so shut up and listen to the experts. Instead of getting into this position, you are going to sit up straight and put your feet on the seat in front of you. That's right. Instead of bracing, you need to just sort of casually lounge on your phone. It's conspiratorial thinking, but of course there is good reason to distrust the aviation industry. It's an industry responsible for an estimated 4% of global warming, an industry that has lobbied against climate regulations and actively worked to suppress climate science. It's an industry that produces calculated misery, intentionally making the standard flight experience worse so that people will pay more to escape it. In recent months, it's been reported that airline close calls have been occurring more frequently than previously disclosed, in large part because of the poor working conditions for air traffic controllers who are required to work grueling schedules that leave them stressed and exhausted. The airlines still manage to usually keep us safe because it's good business, because the costs of negligence outweigh the costs of safety. But what if the economic calculations start to shift? Getting on a plane requires trust. I don't know how a plane works. I don't understand aerodynamics. Lift, drag, thrust. 
I don't know what's happening here. For the most part, our trust is well-founded. Engineers, pilots, flight attendants, and air traffic controllers know what they're doing and don't want you dead. But it's difficult to imagine the institutions of aviation as made up of people. Airlines are multinational corporations. Their workings obscure to us. The staff we interact with aren't supposed to feel like full people. Flight attendants are part of the brand, forced to pitch you on the United Mileage Plus card at the end of your flight. So if trust isn't enough. We're left with denial, distraction, fantasy. The safety videos don't ask us to think through what we would do if the plane crashed. They ask us to forget that the plane exists at all. The plane is a cinematic space, a vague and diffuse symbol of travel, a seamless experience with no labor required. Thank you for flying with us. Enjoy your flight and do not think about the plane. It's been a bit since I last posted. Uh, in that time, I changed my username from the letter 15 to just my name, Tayo Evans. The brand is dead, long live the brand. I've been working on a longer video, but if you want to see me more often, I have a side channel where I post shorter, less complicated videos more frequently. I just posted my annual little New Year's video, uh, so you can check that out over at Tayo, but worse.